Is that your cat? Yes, it is. It's Ruddles. Do you like cats, Mr. Sturbalt? You bet. Especially Spit Roast. You're really fond of that cat, aren't you? He is our companion and our solace. I thought about catnapping the little monster until they let me in, but it wasn't my style. Maybe there was some other way I could use their affection for the cat to get me into the house. Can you tell me anything about Captain Ketch? More than you can tell me about your great-great-great-great-grandfather, no doubt. You're his descendants? Certainly. Captain Ketch was born in Dorset, England, in the reign of King Henry VIII. His family were undistinguished farmers, but young Frederick Ketch decided to go to sea. We have plenty of seamen in our family, Mr. Stobart. Are you interested in history, Mr. Stobart? Yes, I am. You were telling me about Captain Ketch. Do go on. Oh, yes. He sailed under Hawkins. Jim Hawkins? John Hawkins, one of the great traders of the Elizabethan age. In 1568, Frederick Ketch was a young man serving aboard the Jesus, Hawkins' flagship. They sailed from England to Africa and across the wide Atlantic to these islands. Ketch was never to see the shores of England again. How come Ketch never made it home? Because the Spaniards sank the Jesus in an act of treachery. You said Hawkins' fleet traded between Africa and the Indies. What was it they were trading? Black men with no shirts. You have to understand, Mr. Stobart, that this was the 16th century. But that doesn't alter the fact that Hawkins and Ketch were slavers and pirates. Would it surprise you to learn that Hawkins was also a devoutly religious man? He transported slaves in a ship named after Jesus Christ. In my book, that makes him a hypocrite. What happened to Ketch? Was he killed? Oh, no. He got away and returned to this island to this very house. The Frederick Ketch Memorial Museum. Frederick Ketch sounds like he was a pirate to me. As I have already told you, sir, he was not a pirate. They hanged him, you know, down there on the beach in front of his family. Didn't bother with the trial, just whipped him out from his breakfast table and hoisted him up in chains. Well, if he wasn't a pirate, what did they hang him for? Envy. Pure, green-eyed envy. He had been a successful privateer, you see, and had accumulated great wealth. As rich as a mink in a paddock. Shut up, Mina. Yes, Frost. The small-minded governor and his lackeys wanted his money, trumped up some ridiculous charge about breaking the conditions of his letter of mark, and hanged him like a common thief. The blackguards! Letter of Mark? The document that permitted him to engage and destroy the enemies of the crown. The difference between a lawful privateer and a pirate. Yoo-hoo! Sorry, Frost. Well, why didn't Ketch just say, take a hike, guys, I've got a pirating license? Frederick Ketch was not a pirate! But he did show them his letter of Mark. But they destroyed it and hanged him anyway. I've been talking to Rio, the little fisher boy. I'll thank you not to mention that little wretch in my presence. Dirty little whelk, nasty fishy boy. That will do, Mina. I gather you don't have much time for the little boy. That child is a delinquent, Mr. Stobart. Yeah, well, he's only, what, eleven, maybe? A knave with one hand on the tarts. What is it about Rio that you don't like, Miss Frost? Well, once upon a time, he and Emily... Be quiet this instant, Mina! What can you tell me about Emily? Emily? What business can she be of yours? Her parents were killed in a typhoon. We, as her only living relatives, took it upon ourselves to raise the child. That's good to know Charity isn't dead. Oh, but she is. Washed overboard in the typhoon. Mr. Stobart wasn't talking about Emily's mother. He was being sarcastic. What else can you tell me about Emily? How dare you pry into our family in this way? I refuse to answer any more of your impertinent questions. You there? What are you doing?
doing? Pardon me, ladies. I was just going to climb your ladder. I'm helping Bronson. Oh, you're not like him, are you? He's very polite, isn't he, Frost? And he has dimples when he smiles. I think Bronson is trying to cheat those sweet, vulnerable old ladies. That's a little unfair, isn't it? Okay. He's trying to cheat those seriously demented, poisonous old ladies. <laughs> you have to admire his acumen. How come the old ladies closed the museum? It's Bronson's doing. He must the plans for redeveloping the museum. Oh, I know all about Mr. Bronson's plans. Tell me about your friend Emily. Why are you so interested in Emily Ketch? Emily Ketch? A descendant of Captain Ketch, the pirate? Yeah. Well, it doesn't bother you? Why should it? We don't responsible for our ancestors. Can you let me have a fish, kid? I thought you said you don't like fish. It's not for me. It's a present. For the old ladies? Well, it makes a change from flowers and candy. No, it's for their cat. Okay. What do I get out of it? I can pay you. I've got Quaramontian dollars, French francs, and traveler's checks. You must be joking. The nearest bank is three islands away. Will you give me a fish if I give you these... these, uh... real... Are these ugly, tasteless nylon panties worth a fish? No, man. Is this worm worth a fish? Could be good bit. How did it die? I think it drowned in tequila. Just like my Uncle Gabriel. Yeah, I love that. Okay, I'll get you a fish. It might take a while, though. Okay, it was time for diversionary tactics. I thought I saw a little girl down on the beach. You must be mistaken. He must be mistaken. Mustn't he, Frost? I'm sure I'm not. A little girl and that young fisher boy. What? It's not possible. Uh, what were they doing? Are oh, the kinds of things that all little boys and girls get up to at their age? When I was a little girl, we used to play cows and milkmaids. Well betide you if you're lying to us, Mr. Stobart. Heaven help you! With a creak of ancient corsetry, the sisters sailed majestically over the distant horizon. I couldn't reach the flagpole, and a bush stopped me from moving the ladder across. Just my luck. I'd struck out again. The windows were all locked.
I wasn't going to risk further laceration by the cat's claws. Did you see the weird sisters come by here? Did I? They look madder than usual, so I hide until they've gone by. Just as well. They thought you were playing with Emily. Boy, were they steamed. Emily? You're madder than them. There was nothing else I wanted to ask the boy. No luck with the fish? No, man. They don't want bite. That's cause they know there's a storm brewing. Storm? I don't think so. Hey! I got a bite! You have? It's a big one! A real big one! Reel him in, Rio. Jeez, it must be a whale or something. Rustiest whale I ever see. I still need a fish, Rio. Okay, make me try again. Maybe you better change your bait. The only serviceable part of the bicycle's wreck was a rubber inner tube. You just never know when you're going to need stuff like that. There's a fish, my man. I can't put it in my pocket while it's flapping about like that. No problem. Okay, cat. You don't deserve this, but here's a little fish. The little monster ate the fish, but never strayed far from the ball. I wasn't going to risk further laceration by the cat's claws. I couldn't think of any reason to climb the tree. Easy fish, my man.
I put my lucky lump of coal in the catapult. Took aim. No! My lucky piece of coal vanished into the distance. It looked like it was going into orbit. I couldn't reach the flagpole, and a bush stopped me from moving the ladder across. I'd have to do that from the ground. That should get the old cat dancing. I just hoped it didn't give itself a cardiac. I couldn't reach the flagpole, and a bush stopped. Nah, I didn't have the throwing strength to knock the marker off. I didn't have a flag on me, so... I put the ball in the catapult. Took aim. Yes! Okay, so it was a lucky shot, but I'd knocked the theodolite target clean off the end of the flagpole. What the hell's going on here? Hi, Bronson. Nice to see you, too. You again. Have you been screwing around with my theodolite target? Where is it? I had to climb out of the window to put that one on. Damn it, I'm gonna have to go through all that again. Not this time. The house is locked up and the sisters aren't here. Hell's teeth! I'll have to put the spare target on the other flagpole. A whole morning's work wasted. I'm gonna fix all this and then I'm gonna fix you, you hear? Yeah? Fine. I'll be waiting. What you doing, Bronson? Just hanging around? I'm gonna kill you for this, Stobart! Get me down from here! 
What, so you can kill me? Gee, you talked me out of it, Bronson. I felt a little guilty about leading Bronson up there, but not much, obviously. The marker was a bright, shiny thing, and I have a weakness for bright, shiny things. It wasn't going to be much use without the theodolite, though. Bronson out of the way, I could finally get a clear look at the plans. Engineer's drawings didn't mean much to me, but one thing was clear. These plans were for a five-story, 200-roomed, luxury, pirate-themed hotel. Another stain on the bedspread of paradise. hanging from that flagpole. He climbed up there of his own accord. Then help him, you stupid man. Quickly, before he falls. Hi. Could I ask... Never mind that. Help poor Mr. Bronson. Hey! Get me down! What's the magic word? Please! Aw, oh, bad luck. I was thinking of Alakazam. I've got your plans, Bronson. I know about the hotel. So what? This is between me and the dames. Those sweet old ladies trusted you. This isn't what they wanted. Oh, people like them don't know what they want. Instead of wasting their money on this mausoleum, I can turn it to profit. But you should have discussed it with them first. If I was to let you down, will you promise to come clean about your plan? Sure I will. And you'll come to a tasteful compromise with Miss Frost and Miss Mina? Taste? What's taste got to do with architecture? Oh, dear. You'll have to stay where you are until you see sense. You rat. Catch you later, Bronson. Hi. Could I ask... Never mind that. Help... Here, Bronson's plans. This means nothing to me. She's not wearing her reading glasses. Ah, wait. Yes, I see now. I see it all too clearly. That man is planning to build a huge hotel. Bronson is a confidence trickster. Mina, we have been duped. I'm glad we didn't sign his contract. Oh, I hate tricksters, especially confident ones. Come, Mina. Mr. Bronson, you may consider yourself persona non grata. Yes. Cave canum. Kindly disentangle yourself from our flagpole and eject yourself from our property this very minute. Disentangle. Eject! Hey, cut that out, you crazy old bat! How dare you! Mina isn't crazy, she's just engagingly eccentric. Yeah, as a bedbug. Ouch! Lovely as this little vista is, I'd be really grateful if you could let me into the museum now. Certainly, young man. We are most grateful to you for exposing this scoundrel, Mina the Lock.
Thanks, ladies. Stobart, be a pal. Get these harpies off me. Ooh! While George was basking in the sun-drenched Caribbean, I went to London. It was a long shot, but I thought I'd start my search for the Jaguar Stone at the British Museum. I doubted I could sneak this enormous stone out under my jacket. Excuse me, miss. Please don't touch the exhibits. It was a stone identical in size and style to the Coyote stone. However, this stone bore the image of a jaguar. I had and have no interest in old pots. Bonjour. I wonder if you could help me. Oh, hey, Okazaimas. <laughs> What's so funny? <laughs> oh, never mind. I didn't need to make a call. Perhaps I'm a Philistine, but old vases bore me. It was a small, flat square of polished obsidian, nothing like the one I was looking for. According to the caption, this was the scrying mirror given to Dr. John Dee by Sir Francis Drake. There was nothing I wanted to do with the statue except find out where he bought his hat. Très chic. I wanted nothing to do with that statue. It made me nervous somehow. There was nothing very useful in my bag, just a single hair clip. It was a hair clip. The cabinet was locked. Can I help you, miss? What can you tell me about the scrying mirror? Ah, that belonged to the alchemist and part-time Elizabethan spy, Dr. John Dee. It was brought back from the New World by Sir Francis Drake and presented to him. It's Mayan, you know. What is a scrying mirror? It's rather like a crystal ball, and you can't see anything in it. Apparently, he had a partner who used it to talk with angels. If you ask me, you were barking mad. Have you ever heard of an English sea captain called El Draco? El Draco? Not a very English name. I think that's what the Spanish would have called him. It was about the time of the conquistadors. 16th century. Oh, I know. That's what the Spanish called Sir Francis Drake. Francis Drake? Have you got anything here that belonged to him? Indeed, miss. We have a couple of artifacts he brought back from one of his journeys. It didn't look anything like the Coyote Stone. 
This one was like a little black shaving mirror. Is this crying mirror the only piece of obsidian Drake gave Dee? Funny you should ask. There's another called the Jaguar Stone. Dee never liked it, though. Said there were angels in the mirror, but devils in that stone. Can I take a closer look at Dee's mirror, please? No, you cannot. That's why the cabinet is locked. They tried some newfangled interactive scheme. And you can guess what happened. Bloody kids ran off with half the exhibits. Hands on experience, my foot. In my days, it was hands off, I ask you. What do kids know about ancient Mayan civilization? Nothing. I didn't think the museum attendant would be interested in a hair grip. Not even a cute one like this. Can you tell me something about the Jaguar stone? Certainly, miss. The so-called Jaguar stone was brought back from the Americas by Sir Francis Drake and presented, with, as you already know, the more famous scrying mirror, to John Dee. The old loony didn't like the stone, though. Reckoned it was tainted by the devil. Come along, miss. I'll show you the mirror. I've already... Oh, never mind. There. John Dee's famous crying mirror, given to him by Francis Drake. Do you know if this mirror has any relevance to Tezcatlipoca? Oh? Tizetlik... Tizetlik... I can't even say it. Ah, oh, there's someone here who'll be able to help you better than me. This young lady has some questions to ask, Professor. I think she's from France. Professor Roubillet? Eh? What? You two know each other, do you? Uh, excuse me, the telephone. We meet again. Mademoiselle, France, eh? Yes, I believe that's where you live, Professor. I have a house there, on the outskirts of Paris, but I haven't been back for many months. What can you tell me about the Jaguar stone, Professor? It's obsidian, from the Chichen Itza region. Professor Oubier, your taxi's here. If you'll excuse me, I have some urgent business to attend to at the docks. Can you answer me some questions about the Jaguar stone? Certainly, miss. If you just step this way. It's gone. Some sods have inched it. Have inched? Stolen it, miss. Never mind. The silent alarm will have been tripped. I'm afraid nobody can leave until our crack security team gets here. How long will that take? Could be a while. I think it's their tea break. The thief could be miles away by then. Don't you worry about that, miss. Just don't try to leave. It was too much of a coincidence that Oubier showed up and the stone promptly disappeared. I didn't have time for their crack security team to finish their tea. I had to get after him. I didn't steal the stone. I was nowhere near it. So who do you suppose did steal it? It must have been Oubillé. Huh. Begging your pardon, but he's a man of letters. A professor. So was Moriarty. Man of letters or not, he's your culprit. Don't you think it's suspicious that Oubillé has urgent business at the docks? Not in the slightest, young lady. He's gone to oversee the unloading of cargo. An exhibition of Mayan sculpture on loan from Mexico City. What's the name of the ship? The Zibalba Princess, moored down by Tower Bridge. What do you ask? Hmm. Just wondering. Thank you. You've been most helpful. It would probably be less suspicious if I kept away from the empty case. I didn't want the mask, although it certainly reminded me of somebody. Uh, 
Excuse me, miss. I didn't need to make a call. The cabinet was locked. The cabinet... The key didn't fit this lock. That's the kind of thing Georges would do, not me. The key unlocked the case. I locked the case again and took the key. I didn't need to make a call. Excuse me. Look at this. The thief left this key in the cabinet. Oh dear. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. That makes the theft an inside job, right? Oh dear. In other words, the thief was Professor Oubier. Well, let's leave that for the police to decide, shall we? I better phone them right away. Hello? I knew I had nothing to worry about if the police were called. Yes, I'll hold. But I had to catch up with Oubillé, and fast. The doors were securely locked. It was an obsidian dagger, thin and razor sharp. I levered the handle open with the thin dagger. The room had been decorated to resemble the interior of a sailing ship. It was disturbingly effective. Holding that lantern, I felt kind of biblical, like Jesus or, or Florence Nightingale.
The ship looked too fragile to touch. Hmm. Surprise! What the? Who are you? I'm Emily. What were you doing in there, Emily? Hiding. What are you doing here? Uh, Grown-up stuff. Grown-ups? I'm never going to grow up. I'm not. You shouldn't be here. What's your name? I'm George. Pleased to meet you, Jaws. George. Jaws? Jeez. Make your mind up. What can you tell me about Captain Ketch? That's him on the wall. In the picture. Yeah? Boy, that's interesting. He was a sailor captain. This is his house. Why don't you go play with Rio? I'm not allowed. How come? Because Aunt Frost says I'm not allowed out of the house. That's why, Mr. Nosy Beak. Too bad. Why don't you ask your other aunt if you can play with Rio? Aunt Mina's cuckoo. Aunt Frost says so. She says when the Lord handed out common sense, Aunt Mina was off getting double portions of chin. That Rio's a smart kid. He helped me out with Bronson. Rio is clever. He can spit ever so far. Look, an ancient Mayan stone. Is that a magic stone? Well, I don't know about that. No. Would you like to play darts? No. Oh, come on. I'll throw, you catch. That's dangerous. Darts will stick in me and make me bleed. Do you know how to use a theodolite? We don't learn anything about surveying at my school. Not until fifth grade. March 20th, 1570 fix. Engaged frigate off Fan Falvador? It was garbage. Huh. I guess being a pirate didn't require too many academic qualifications. The passage went on to describe how Ketch had got wind of the approach of a fleet of English ships. It seemed the new governor had not shared his predecessor's views on Ketch's activities. They were out for his blood. Sailed to that place where I made secure my fortune. I returned safe in the knowledge that the governor shall not discover that which I had hidden. For is it not writ that tis easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle Okay, I've had my hands on an historical document. Now what? The chart fitted exactly into the recess on the top of the desk. What you doing, Jaws? I'm putting this old map on the desk. What you doing that for, Jaws? Because it was obviously intended to fit in this recessed area. How'd you work that out? It's obvious. Hard a port, bosun! Aye aye, Captain Stobart! She cannot take it, Captain! My lad's dead. Abandon ship! Captain Frederick Ketch, 1570. Around his neck was a cross. Maybe he was a part-time pirate. The portrait might have made a nice souvenir, but it was too large to carry. Two bells and all's well. Pirates were cool. It would have been easy to reach the cutlass and slip it in my pocket. It would also have been the most regrettable action of my life. Yow! I should have known better than to put my hand in there. Grandma Stobart had a nasty experience in a water butt once.
That might come in useful. In ticklish situations. What you doing now, Jaws? Knock it off, will ya? There's something you ought to know. I don't buy cute or lost puppy. I'm just borrowing this feather, that's all. Why? I might be able to make use of it. You gonna steal it? That's bad. I'm gonna tell on you. No, don't do that. Why not? Well, because I'm not stealing. Just borrowing. It was firmly attached to the desk. It was the quill I had found in the Ketch Museum. It was the electronic marker which Bronson used with his theodolite. The lantern fitted so precisely in the inkwell, it could only be deliberate. What you doing now? Grown-up stuff. I doubt that. I've put the lantern in the inkwell. See? It fits. Why? Because it was cut to fit. Why? Because sneaky old Captain Ketch made it that way. Why? What is with all the questions? Because I'm interested. Why? Because I have the insatiable curiosity of the young. Why? All right. Truce. That looked like that's where it was supposed to be, so I left it there. The ship looked too fragile to touch. Why don't you run along and play? Aunt Mina told me, stay out of mischief. Well, that doesn't mean you have to stay indoors, does it? On a beautiful day like today? There's a storm coming. Oh, nuts. You don't know that. I do so. I can see the whole world from the window. Yeah, well, like I said, I'm busy. That cross you're wearing, Emily. It's my lucky Jesus cross. It's just like the one Captain Ketch wore. Uh-huh. Can I borrow it? Uh-uh. What would you trade for that cross, Emily? A puppy. Well, I don't happen to have a puppy in my pocket right now. Can you think of anything else you'd trade? Don't know. There were several things I wanted to say to that awful kid, but I held my tongue. Before you ask, I've put the feather back. Are you happy now? Don't you want to steal it anymore? For the last time, I didn't steal it. That's your word against mine, and I'm the one with the dimples. That looked like that's where it was supposed to be, so I left it there.
Whatever lived in that barrel could stay there as far as I was concerned. It would have been easy to reach the cutlass and slip it in my pocket. It would also have been the most... It was the portrait of... The portrait might have made a nice suit. The ship looked too fragile to touch. Sailed to that place where I made secure. I returned safe in the knowledge that the... For is it not writ that tis easier for a camel to pass through the... The cat made short work of the feather, tearing it into a blizzard of small pieces. There was nothing else on the bicycle wreck. What do you give to a small, irritating girl who asks about everything? Try a conch. Delicate colors, interesting shape, and when you put it to your ear, you can hear the sea. Yeah? Why is that? Usually because you're standing next to it. Cool. Have you got one? Yeah, but I promise it to my sister. She well vexed with me. Why is your sister mad with you? Well, last night, when I got home with our supper, she went wild. Rio, she said, how come all you ever catch is puffer fish? A sick of puffer fish. What I want is tiger fish. So don't bother come back home till you catch one, boy. I don't see how I'm going to catch no tiger fish. All I have is a fishing pole and a worm. What do you need to catch a tiger fish? One of them real fancy flies like the rich fishermen use. Hey, this is just what you need to make a fly. Thanks. Let's hope them tiger fish hungry. A deal's a deal. Here's a conch.
Here, I've got a conch. Would you like it? Don't know. Aunt Frost told me never to take presents from strange men. I'm not a strange man. Then why are you called Jaws, Jaws? That's a stupid name. I'm not called. Look, conch, pretty. Swap for the cross, yes or no? Mm. Right. This thing's going out the window. Okay, we'll do swapsies. Ketch's crucifix was encrusted with precious gems. Ketch's cross slipped snugly into the penholder. Before you ask, I've put your cross in this little hole in the desk. Why? Impulse mainly, with a dash of irrational intuition. Silly, only women have intuition. The lantern cast a strong light over the desktop. The light cast a shadow of the cross. And the shadow fell precisely over a small, unnamed island, shaped like a skull. That must be it. Ketch's treasure island. Uh oh, that zombie island. It's a bad place. No kidding. Well, bad place or not, that's my next port of call. Can I come too? The hell you can. I never get to leave the house. The novelty value of having an inner tube in my pocket had worn off. I left it there. Would you take me to uh, Zombie Island? In this weather, you're mad, man. The rain will keep the zombies indoors. Just say I did meet a zombie. What would you do? There ain't no zombies on Zombie Island. At least not anymore. It's uninhabited. Good. What do you mean, not anymore? You still want to go? I guess. Well, I ain't had no luck with them tiger fish, and with the mood my sister is in. I'll be safer with the zombies. So, this was Zombie Island. Somehow I'd been expecting something more sinister. Come on, Rio. Let's find that treasure. No, thanks. I'm staying right here. Oh, come on. You said yourself there's no zombies left. Yeah, but that was while there was a big pile of seawater between me and this place. All me have now is this little bit between the boat and the shore, and I'm hanging on to it. No. It can't be. But it was my lucky piece of coal. Rio, how far away is Ketch's Landing from here? Best part of ten miles. Why? Ten miles? That catapult must have been a lot more powerful than I thought. The cliff was steep, too steep to climb without handholds. 
and I couldn't find any. It was too high. I couldn't get up there. Rio's boat was strewn with fishing nets and tackle. That Emily sure asks a lot of questions. Resit man, this whole Emily business just isn't funny. Look, we're obviously at cross purposes here. I'm talking about Emily Ketch. Yeah, and so am I. She was my friend. Her aunts hated it, but we did move together, you know. She used to be real keen at hide and seek. It could take hours to find her. One time, the last time, it took Dears. She must have shouted and screamed herself hoarse, but there was nobody to hear her. Where'd she hidden herself? Captain Ketch's old sea chest. The only way to open it was from the outside. Suddenly, I didn't feel so good. We never exchanged another word about Emily Ketch. Could I borrow your net? Yeah, man, no problem. You planning on catching some fish? Nope. I'm after a big rock. Here I go. Wish me luck, Rio. Good luck, George. Watch out for the walking dead. I stumbled down dark stairwells for what seemed like forever, until suddenly I found myself... Wow! in an abandoned London underground station. This place must have been closed down decades ago. The machine wasn't about to weigh me for nothing. The date on the poster was before I was born. It looked just like the modern one. A latch lock stopped me getting into the cupboard. The blade of the dagger just fitted between the door and the soft wood frame. The door gave slightly and then held firm. A latch lock stopped me. My fingers were too big to reach into the tiny crack. The blade of the dagger was too thick to get into the narrow crack.
The slot was much too thin for my fingers. The machine needed to be fed a coin before it would operate. The tray was empty. The cup was empty. It might have been a nice souvenir if it hadn't been torn and dirty. The machine looked like it had sold its last ticket a long time ago. I'd probably break my neck if I climbed over the slippers, or worse, a heel. The hair grip was too thick to fit into the crack. The slot was much too thin for my fingers. I pushed the hair clip into the slot and whatever was stuck there disappeared into the machine. The tray was... I pulled out and... I put the old penny into the slot the needle twitched rustily and the machine spat out a card. The weight was in imperial units. It meant nothing to me. The card also had my fortune on it. A family quarrel will turn out to your advantage. I remembered my student days when I regularly forgot my house keys. A wiggle with the thick card between the frame and the lock and the latch lifted. The train was my ride out of there. I could worry about not having a ticket when I got to the docks.
Nothing, I mean nothing, would possess me to step into that swamp. As soon as I stooped to investigate the hole, its inhabitant disappeared into the darkness. It was a short, hollow reed. The end of the reed had been neatly bitten off. Now I knew what was living in there a long-toothed, snarling, furry, wild thing. If I jumped, I could just about reach the branch. The dart fitted snugly into the reed. Great. I was tooled up and dangerous.
The creeper just came away from the rock as I pulled it. No good. I'd have to be bitten by a radioactive spider before I stood any chance of getting up there. The creeper didn't look like it would hold my weight. The net attached easily enough to the creeper and seemed secure. Great. I'd created some sort of creeper marker fishing net assembly. Sometimes I terrify myself with my creative genius. I'd successfully got the marker into a position near the top of the needle simply by using the kind of lateral thinking that can get you institutionalized.
What the? Steady, guy. It's just a monkey. Oh, no. Hold on. I've been here before. Haven't I? Joining the dots would make an equilateral triangle. Initials carved into the stone read F.K. Frederick Ketch had been here. The hill I was on had reminded me of a camel's hump as I'd climbed up it. Now I had to see what I could see. It was a good cave for hiding treasure in. Shame about the flooding problem. A needle rock. Eye of the needle? A needle rock. Eye of the needle? Ketch could have hidden his treasure anywhere. This island's full of hiding places. Heck. There was an enormous cave. Every tourist for the last three centuries must have been in that one. An ugly little cave. Didn't look like the sort of place he'd want to leave treasure.
Ketch could have hidden his treasure anywhere. This... It was the marker which I had raised up the needle of rock. I could see the marker I had fastened on the rock down in the forest, and right in line with it, the rock I was looking for. Stay cool, Storm. Joining the dots would make an equal... I couldn't open the crate, and I couldn't move it. Pablo would probably shoot me on sight. I wasn't going in there until I knew if anyone was inside. I couldn't get near it with that guard patrolling the deck. The tactical advantage of hiding in there escaped me.
Got you. But the Kolar woman was there. They'll know it was me. But you have the stone. The right stone, you're sure? Yes, of course, it's the Jaguar stone. No possible mistake. Here it is. Karzak, please. The police will be looking for me soon. You're going to get me out of the country, aren't you? Stop your whining, UBA. Do you have any idea what this stone symbolizes? I thought you just wanted it to frighten the natives. Fool. I intend to cast this stone into the sea. But why? It's unique. Exactly. With it gone, the Mayan priest's plan to destroy Tezcatlipoca cannot succeed. I can assure you that Tezcatlipoca is a mythical figure. Such a small mind you live in. Tezcatlipoca is real. I have seen him in my dreams. We have spoken of his plans for this world. We have spoken of your part in these plans. My part? He told me you would be useful. He told me how to crush your spirit by turning you to drugs. My wife died. You know that full well. She was my world, my everything. And now? You are no longer useful. She called out your name as she died, you know? What? What are you saying? And then they thought you'd done it. It all worked perfectly. You? It was you? You bastard! You monster! For the love of God, Karzak! Which one? There were no signs of life, but I checked that Ubier really was beyond help. We were going to need the stone to thwart Karzak. I knew Ubiye would have approved. It was the Jaguar stone, all right. Pirates! I was about to make good my escape when... Cut! Who the hell are you? Uh, I can explain everything. Don't bother. I'm sorry, I didn't realize you were making a movie. So who are you? Stobart, George Stobart. Uh, two B's and two T's. It's okay, Mr. Hawks, he wasn't in the shot. Hawks? This had to be Carlton Hawks, the newest enfant terrible of Tinseltown. I'd read about him. Mailroom boy makes good. Nice to know it was still possible to get to be a director armed with only an encyclopedic knowledge of postal charges. Stay out of the way, surfer boy. I'll deal with you later. Surfer boy?
What's the name of the movie? Are you trying to be funny? No. It's Treasure Island, the only book I ever read twice. I don't recall any girls in Treasure Island. Gotta think box office. People like that kind of thing. What other changes have you made to the story? Just a few minor details. You haven't written out Long John Silver. Are you questioning my integrity as an artist? Of course, Silver's still in it. We've even hung on to Captain Flint. His parrot. His trained attack falcon. Why do you think Blind Pew's blind? Did you say you've changed the ending of the story? That's right. Do they find the treasure? Yeah, but that comes later, after they've escaped the volcanic eruption. A volcano? Sure. Krakatoa. All the millions spent on a movie, and nobody thinks to buy an atlas. Who's playing Jim Hawkins? Hi, Q. McEwen. Oh, don't tell me you've never heard of him. I don't go to the movies too often. Jeez, Haiku is only the hottest teen star in Hollywood. That's why we're on such a tight schedule. Gotta film the close-ups before he hits puberty. Who's the leading lady? Don't you recognize her? That's Sharon Kowalski. Oh right, I'd never heard of her. You know what the locals call this place, don't you? No, but I guess you're gonna tell me. Zombie Island. Zombies. A crazed gleam came into his eye. Get me the writers. Get me makeup. I want zombie pirates in this movie by the end of today. You wouldn't get me up there. Hi, I'm George Stobart. My name's Harris. Most people call me Flash. You're the cameraman, right? That's right. Why'd they call you Flash? You used to be a stills photographer? Nope. I decided not to pursue the subject. There was nothing else I wanted to ask the cameraman. The bun was so stale it felt like a small rock. Hi, George Stobart. Hello, mate. You're English, right? Blimey, you don't miss much, do you? Bert Savage, have you seen what the caterers laid on today? Buns and pancakes. That's awful. It's an improvement on yesterday. The buns are stale, but the pancakes are bloody lovely. How long have you been in the movie business? Flipping years, mate. Absolutely flipping years. I was in the army before that. Thought to myself. You've been risking your bleeding neck every day. Why not cash in on it, like? So you became a stuntman, just like that? Nah, of course not. I had to do the training first. What training does a stuntman do? First, they told me to stand in the road. Then they run me down, straight up, drove at me with a car. I couldn't believe it. I was up on the bonnet and over the other side before I realised he wasn't stopping. Then they threw me downstairs a bit and gives me a certificate. Did you ever work with Carol Climax? The dirty dashend? I'll say, flipping princess, mate. I heard she was very beautiful. Mind you, she acted like one too, ordering this, demanding that. Did you ever meet Bertrand Ubie? Meet him? No. I saw him a few times though. He didn't like his wife being in films. Do you think Ubie murdered his wife? I wouldn't be surprised if he did. Mind you, there were plenty of people who could have done her in. I thought the public loved her. Yeah. But people who knew her saw the other side. Would you like a bun? No way. The last one I tried cracked my dentures. Do you want to try some syrup with your pancakes? No thanks, mate. I've got to watch my waistline. Would you like a pancake, Bert? No thanks, mate. I've plenty here. Have you ever seen anything like this before? What's that, mate? Stone axe? No, it's just a piece of polished stone. Very nice, very nice indeed. Shine it up a bit. You get a few bob for that. Would you like a pancake, Bert? No, thanks, mate. As I walked towards the bush, it started buzzing angrily.
Hey there, I'm George Stobart. Well, hi, handsome. You're cute. I wish it was you playing the lead male instead of that kid. I can't act, ma'am. So what? I bet you can kiss. I couldn't believe I was having this conversation with a real movie star. What's it like sharing the spotlight with an actor who's young enough to be your son? What do you mean? What do you think of Hawk's treatment of Treasure Island? It's okay, I guess. I never saw the original. It's a book. One of my favorites. Really? The novelization's out already? What part are you playing? Pirate Babs, the ruthless and passionate Lady Buccaneer. It's a great part. I get to kiss a lot, and I kick ass. Like the boots. Would you like this bun? All right. Oh, wait a minute. Hawks is watching me. Don't let him see it. Oh, he's looking right at me. What's the matter? Never mind. Just put that cake away and pretend you weren't talking to me. What do you think of these? Ew, they're awful. You have no idea how much you've just gone up in my estimation. Take a look at this ancient Mayan artifact. That's just a hunk of stone with a picture scratched on it. In a way, I guess. You don't happen to have seen anything similar, have you? No. I found this reed in the swamp on the other side of the island. Oh, yeah? Yeah, and I used it to shoot a poison dart at a wild boar. It was a real-life drama, not just a scene from a movie. Right. She was having trouble with the whole real-life-is-not-a-movie concept. Hi there, George Stobart. Uh-huh, yeah. Hi, Koo McEwen. You're playing Jim Hawkins, right? Jimbo. I had Mr. Hawks change his name. Jimbo Hawkins, right. Is your name really Haiku? Yeah. It was my mom's idea, okay? When I was born, I was so small and perfectly formed, I reminded her of a Japanese poem. Well, I guess it could have been worse. She could have called you Limerick. That's my middle name. Did you always want to be an actor? I don't think of what I do as acting, man. You're not alone. It's more like I'm the voice of my generation. What I'm saying, I'm saying for the kids on the street. Which is what? I'm crap, I'm going nowhere? Huh? What are you saying, man? Stobart, get out of shot. Positions, everybody. I'll get a flip chart and explain it to you later, Haiku. Haiku, baby, are you ready? Okay, man. Uh, which scene is this? You've been captured by Silver's accomplice, Pirate Babs, who's fallen in love with you. That whirring sound you can hear? It's Robert Louis Stevenson spinning in his grave. Okay, people. Top of page 76, Sharon. What about my big speech? It's been cut. Everybody ready? Up to speed. Quiet on the set. Okay, let's make magic. Oh, please. And action! Why don't you forget that dumb old squire and his bunch of merry men? Can't you see we were made for each other? I know, but Squire Trelawney saved my life, Captain Babs. Why? If it hadn't have been for him, that giant octopus would have made mincemeat out of me. But right now he thinks you're a traitor. He's locked you out of the stockade, Jimbo. That 20-foot high wall with spikes might have kept out Silver's men, but it ain't gonna stop me. Oh, Jimbo. And cut! Good heavy breathing, Sharon. Natch, I'm a pro. Did you get the heavy breathing flash? Did I have a boss? We should have made this movie in 3D. Haiku, you were great. We're setting up for the stunt now, so get a bite to eat. Savage, on set, damn it! Hey, Haiku. Yeah, man. 
I may not be making millions of dollars, and I may not have thousands of nubile, if uncritical, young women lusting for my body, but I've got something that you haven't. This small piece of coal. Man, you're getting freaky on me. Would you like a bun? No way, man. I have to be careful what I eat. Yeah. Never eat anything smarter than yourself. What do you think of Haiku McEwen? What's to think? The kid will have earned more by the time his balls drop than I'll earn in a lifetime. Good luck to him. Mr. Hawks, I was wondering if... Not now! I got a movie to make! Time for the stunt, Savage! It's a short run, bounce on the plank, and somersault over the spikes and stockade wall. Do what? Plank, spikes, wall, over! Easy, a child could do it. At my age? You must be joking. I could replace you, Savage. Yeah, with an arthritic baboon. Replace me? Lummy, this could be the last stunt I ever perform. I need to think about this. Get myself in the right frame of mind. A suicidal one would fit the bill for that stunt. Fine. You do that. In the meantime, we'll break for lunch. Oh, great. I'm famished. Stay right there and meditate, Savage. Tight-ass little git. I wasn't going to upset Hawks anymore by tampering with his props. No way was I going to try and jump it. Those stakes looked real. Hi. Hi, gorgeous. I couldn't think of anything else to talk to her about. I don't want to worry you, but there's a hornet's nest over in that bush. Hornets. That reminds me of a film I was in. The Black Hornet. The Black Hornet? I don't remember seeing that one. Before your time, most likely. What happens in it? Lummy, what don't happen in it? I was shot, stabbed, fed to piranhas, dangled from an airship, and trampled by a zebra. No, I mean, what was the plot? Plot? Would you like a pancake, Bert? Don't mind if I do. I was already carrying one of the stale buns. I didn't want another one of the pancakes in my pocket. Another pancake, Bert? Yeah, go on. The pancake oozed maple syrup all over Bert's chins. Ew, you put bloody syrup on that pancake. Now it's messed me all up. Those hornets were not pleased. And get that camera rolling. This could be good. <laughs> Cut and print it. That was brilliant, folks.
Okay, the next scene is down on the beach. This is where Hawkins finds the treasure in the cave of the crabs. Would those be giant killer crabs by any chance? Giant mutant killer crabs with attitude. There it was, the rock I'd seen from the camel's hump. Now that I was close up, I could make out a small cave near the top of the pillar. Hey, you! Trouble! Oh, who? Me? I want you to stay right where I can keep an eye on you. I'm not one of your lackeys, Hawks. I go where I like. Not here you don't. The movie company has rented this island for the duration. You're trespassing. Do as you're told or you're gone. Yeah, 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 hang on there a minute, champ. No messing with the equipment of the Union will be down on you. Oh, okay. That camera wasn't going anywhere. There was nothing else I wanted to ask the cameraman. Hi, Bert. Don't you eye me. Fine friend you turned out to be. What's the problem? Huh. <laughs> What's it like to work with Carlton Hawk? Flipping misery, mate. Look, Bert, what's wrong? You got a bloody nerve. If I didn't know better, I'd have thought you gave me that pancake just so them ornits would go for me. Oh, Bert, you've wounded me. How can you think that? Well, by looking at the evidence. I don't know why you still want to be a stunt man anyway. Cause it's all I know, isn't it? If I don't do this, what do I do? Well, how about being a stunt coordinator? Being a what? You stand around in a big jacket and a baseball cap, telling the stunt people what to do. I can do that. Hey, you've done the job for years and you're not dead. That's got to be good for morale. Well, I don't know. You get your own megaphone. I'll do it. George Stobart, international adventurer and roaming careers advisor. What films have you worked on in the past? Remember Death Stalker of the 10th grade? The psychotic biker what crashed into the school bus? That was me. Or what about they prayed to Satan? I was the bloke in the hospital scene. You know, the one who caught fire, fell through the flipping skylight. I don't think I caught those. Must be cool getting to travel the world like this. Yeah, nice here, isn't it? My Beryl used to love the seaside. Day out at Clacton. Bloody smashing. A pint of jelly deals washed down with a bottle of brown. Quick feel on a big wheel and a stroll around the town. Course them days, you could live like a flipping king on ten bob a night. Tom Bowler, frothy coffee at the calf of the prom. You know, I don't have the faintest idea what you're talking about. I've had a great idea. How about you dress up as Jim Hawkins and climb up to that cave over there? What cave? That cave? You must think I'm balmy. I did me back in being chased by them ornits over that flaming stockade wall. No way am I going up there. Well, that narrowed the field. Hey, Haiku. Yeah, man. There was nothing else I wanted to ask him.
Hey, get out of shot. Flash? Yep. We can't film at the Needle Rock because the camera's bogged down, right? You got it, champ. So why can't we use the portable camera instead? You know, that's a pretty smart idea. There was nothing else. I had nothing else to ask. Hey, get out of shot. Hey, Haiku. Yeah, man. There was nothing else I wanted to ask him. Hey, surfer boy, stay out of there. Oh, what is it this time? That's the wardrobe tent. You've got no business to be going in there. Looked like I wasn't going to get to play dress up. I was talking to Mr. Savage, the stuntman. Is he all right? What makes you say that? He's not making any sense. The guy's English. I've been talking to the cameraman. He's got a portable camera. So? So you can use the cave in that rock pillar at the end of the beach. That's a dramatic cave if ever I saw one. We ain't got a stabilized harness for it. The camera will wobble. Did D.W. Griffiths have a stabilized harness when he made Birth of a Nation? You're right, damn it. Hitchcock, Wells. None of them needed one. For crying out loud, Sam Rainey stabilized his camera on a plank. Props, get me a plank. We're gonna wing it. Hot dog. We're gonna do a cinema verite pirate movie. Nothing on this earth will get me to climb up there. That's a career-limiting remark, Savage. My career's over, mate. The back's buggered. I've been thinking it over. I'll be your stuntman. You? Yeah, sure. If it means I get to dress up as a pirate. I appreciate the offer, but if you fall, you'll sue us. No, I won't. Everybody hear that? I heard it. Good enough, we're covered. Got any experience? Death-defying leaps, desperate fist fights, getting caught in explosions, you name it. Okay, people, move out. We're shooting the scene at the end of the beach. George, get to wardrobe. We're gonna make you a star. On my way. Ready when you are, Mr. Hawks. It was the stone which Ketch had captured from the Spanish. The Eagle Stone. I returned to Cuaramonte and found that Georges had left a message with Conchita. He'd already left for the Indian village, so I hurried to catch up with him. When I arrived, I found a scene of desolation.
These sunglasses are George's. George, where are you? Titi Poco, I'm almost glad to see you. <laughs> you little asshole, what happened here? Are you responsible for this? Uh. And where's Georges? Have you seen him? Uh -uh. He was pointing to the remains of a burned out hut. These are George's shades, right? Has he been here? Uh, George! Where is he now? What's that? It looks like the stone we bought from Paris, but it's different. Yes, it has a carving of an eagle. That clinches it. Georges must have found this stone in the Caribbean and managed to hide the stone when the village was attacked by Karzak's men. I hope to God that Georges was all right. Where's Georges? Georges has been here, right? He was pointing to the smoldering remains of a hut. That cup was no use to me. It had a hole in it. There was nothing in the barrel. The barrel was too heavy to move. It was too hot to pick up. I didn't need the lantern since it was still daylight. Besides, it was broken. I just didn't have the strength to tip Hey, Shorty, make yourself useful and help me with this barrel. Thanks. I recognize that. It's the Coyote Stone. I had the Coyote and Jaguar Stones. Titi Poco had the Eagle, according to the Shaman. That's all we needed to deal with Tezcatlipoca. Pity he hadn't any ideas for dealing with Karlzak. What is it? Where are you pointing? Ashes. The thought that they might be human chilled me to the bone. There was nothing I wanted to ask him.
The scaffold gantry went all the way up the pyramid. The button didn't seem to do anything. Hey, senorita! Too late. I had been seen. Bonjour, Capitaine. <laughs> Only Sergeant, pretty one. What are you doing here? Uh... Snuggles said I could come here with him. Snuggles? Oh, I mean the General. We are, uh, friends. May I go up the pyramid? Ah, we have strict instructions not to let anybody pass. Oh, but I've told you who I am. Surely nobody would mind. Well... Oh, please, I'd be ever so grateful. I tell you what, I'll ask Pablo if it's okay for you to go up. If Pablo saw me, I'd be dead. Uh, no, it's not worth the bother. I'm not really that interested in their stupid pyramid anyway. Well, okay. It's men's work up there anyway. I'll just run along and play around here, okay? Okay, you do that. I didn't want to push my luck by talking with the guards again. Poco, I have an important job for you. Take this rope to the top of this scaffolding and throw it over the top. Rope. The scaffold gantry went all the way up the pyramid.
The button didn't seem to do anything. It was a small, screw-fit cylindrical housing. The motor spluttered into life. Titipoko, when I tell you, I want you to copy what I am doing. Copy. Okay? Copy. Georges! I realized those bastards were going to sacrifice Georges to Tezcatlipoca over my dead body. Thankfully, Georges was the only one to notice me. Where are they? The eclipse is about to happen. Patience. Your mother will be here soon and Karzak will be close behind. Just keep the Yankee covered and leave the worrying to others. Yeah, Raoul. The maniacs were going to sacrifice Georges. Shut up, Stobar. Just shut up. Calm down. He's no threat. Hey, Raoul. Why don't you do us both a favor and shoot Pablo? You're very funny, Stobar. I haven't forgotten Marseille. When Karzak cuts your heart out, I'll be the one laughing. I'll bet I'm not the only one due for the chop around here either. Hey, Raoul? I'm warning you. Raoul was a bundle of raw nerves. I hoped Georges wouldn't push him too far. The crates and drums were sealed and I had no way of getting into them. If Pablo had seen me, he'd have killed me. It was as simple as that. I might have been able to talk the general around if Pablo hadn't been there. 
Karzak and his pet vermin had got George tied to the sacrificial table. I had to come up with a plan or he was as good as dead. I couldn't get near the pot unseen. How did you hook up with a maniac like Karzak in the first place? Karzak? Whoop whoop loco! Yes, he scares me too. Poco, do you still have that lighter gun you pull on me so amusingly? What's going on over there? Do you need help, my pretty? Nothing's wrong. I dropped uh, a cigarette, but everything is under control. I'll have the fire out in a minute or two. What's that? What's happening? Trouble. Give it up. The pyramid's surrounded. I'll find out what the trouble is. Watch Stover doesn't pull any tricks. If he does, shoot him in the head, not through the heart. Why does it matter? He'll be dead either way. His heart belongs to Tezcatlipoca. That's not true. We just had dinner a couple of times. The crates and drums were Drop the gun or I shoot. Please don't hurt me. Don't worry yourself, my finger isn't loaded. Nico, what are you doing here? Firstly, I'm going to set George free and then screw up Karzak's scheme. No, I can't let you do that. Karzak has promised me power. Raoul, wake up. The only thing Karzak has on offer is death. You may want to ask Oubie, except you can't. Karzak murdered him. You're lying. Oubie is in Europe. Sure he's in Europe. In London, on a mortuary slab with two bullet holes in him. But Karzak promised. When he frees Tezcatlipoca, we'll all be granted great power. Listen to her, Raoul. Karzak's insane. I, I, I don't know. I, I need to think. You've let your mother do your thinking for you up to now. You need to think for yourself. Your mother and Karzak think alike. There's only one expendable member of the plan left, and that's you. Mother would never betray me. Oh, I'm tired of trying to reason with you, Raoul. Titipoco. Thank you. 
Watch this man, and if he makes a move, shoot him with your gun. Hold still, George. I don't want to sacrifice you by accident. You have no idea how glad I am to see you. They were going to cut your heart out. I think I can guess. We can save the happy reunions for later. We've got to move. Come on! We're safe. This is a dead end. We're toast. I know, Tiripoko. I'm not too happy here either. He knows this is Tezcatlipoca's pyramid. The house of the enemy. Well, we can't stay here like rats in a trap. And we can't go out the way we came in. It would be suicide. I'll have a look round. Maybe there's another way out. In the meantime... Take this. It's the Coyote Stone. It might bring you luck, I hope. You managed to recover the stones from the village? Then we might have a chance after all. Incidentally, what would Titipoco have done if Graciento had moved? Titipoco? Nothing. He's given up violence. Oof, the lever was very difficult to move and appeared to do nothing anyway. Heave! Still no good. This was a time for action, not talk. The pattern seemed to have only religious significance. The pattern meant nothing to me. Georges? Yeah? George, I can only pull one lever at a time, and I think we need to pull both together. Okay, I'm up for that. Raúl, there's something suspicious got this sacrifice. Where is it? Nico was here with Titipoco. They set him free. I couldn't stop them. You idiot! I should have strangled you at birth. Titipoco's gone soft. He wouldn't have hurt you. I know that. The darkness of this honey is almost upon us, and we have no sacrifice to appease Tezcatlipoca. Have you any idea what your incompetence will cost us? I think so. And I'm glad. What? The Mayans weren't fools. Tezcatlipoca should stay exactly where they put him. Finally got some backbone from somewhere, huh? Shame it's so late in the day. I'd rather die than see you and Karzak with the devil's power. Fine, we're still a sacrifice short. See, the eclipse begins. Pablo, kill him! This Catlipoca can feed upon his yellow heart. Nico was right all along, but it's still not too late. Come on then, Pablo. Let's see who sacrifices who. Ah! 
What place is this? I was in some sort of strange room. Tiles and dials. The priests who designed this place must have known how to use them. I was going to have to figure it out for myself if I ever wanted to get out of here. The chute I'd arrived on was too steep and slippery to get back up. The tile moved slightly. The room was dominated by an enormous device, decorated with the usual Mayan motifs. It held two great discs, each covered in glyphs. The tile moved inwards and clicked home. The tile didn't want to move.
<laughs> Et voilà, George once told me that there's an act to finding secret doors. I think I'm beginning to get the hang of it. So I thought, this is it, you know? This is true love. Anyway, I have to leave for a few weeks, and when I come back, what do I find? Ugh. Damn right. And with who? Labano, that creep. Mm, huh? Yeah, that's exactly what I thought. Oh, heck. Looks like another dead end, Titty Poco. Any ideas? I was hoping for something a little more constructive. Never mind, I'll have a look around. The only thing he could do with the statue was sit on it. And Titty Poco had beaten me to that. Look, I need to light this torch. Can you do something clever with a couple of sticks or flint and tinder or... Or a cheesy novelty cigarette lighter, as it turned out. Well, there was nothing else to do around here, so I pulled the lever. Nothing's happened. Oh, I hate that. Don't you hate that? Ah! Tiddy Poco? Oh, my... Whoa! Great. I had no idea where I was, no idea where the others had got to, and time was running out to stop Karzak. Still, I wasn't dead yet. So it wasn't all bad news. The torch could stay there until I really needed it. A stone slab that must have weighed tons sealed the door. The doorway was sealed with a massive slab of stone. Charming. The statue looked like it doubled as an incense burner.
A stone slab sealed off the doorway. Every time I think this place can't get any spookier, it does. There was nothing I could do to the carving, even if I'd wanted to, which I didn't. Yes! Finally! I'm out of here. Once more, into the unknown. Cool. Onwards and downwards, Mr. Stobart. This was it. The Pyramid's central chamber, its dark heart. Once before in my life, I'd stood in front of a door and thought, this is it. If I go through there, I'm going to die. I'd been wrong then. I hoped I was wrong now. This was the door that led to the central chamber and the smoking mirror.